everyone, this is Jean. I'm back with another video. So, this video is going to be about Harley Quinn and the age old topic of uh, females and sexualization and the, the sexualized display of a female character. So, let's get to it. So, this is a tweet exchange between David Ayer who was the director of the 2016 Suicide Squad movie, to my understanding, and Samu de Badalona, right? So I want to address Badalona's tweet first and then David Ayer's response. So Badalona writes, uh, Harley was sexualized in the entire Suicide Squad movie, and in Birds of Prey, she was a real character, not eye candy. Now, I'm going to go back to the start. I want to give a little history lesson about the character. Harley Quinn debuted in the Batman animated series cartoon in 1992, in particular in the season one, episode seven, The Joker's Favor. And she debuts as the Joker's loving, devoted girlfriend. Now, Harley has always had sexuality as a part of her character, in particular uh, her interactions with the Joker. Such examples are this scene from Mad Love, which was in a one-off comic and in the cartoon itself, right, where she uh, tries to tempt Joker into other activities by saying, don't you want to rev up your Harley? Right? Or in another episode where she sings happy anniversary to him, and she pops out of a cream pie, and as you can see here, she's covered in cream. Not that her attempts at seduction ever work. Joker usually just throws her out to the dogs. But here's the thing. For all the focus on her sexuality, right, and especially her sexual advances toward the Joker, it seems to me that the more important thing about her is forgotten. The fact that she is a broken woman, the fact that she is physically and emotionally damaged by Joker. For example, in the episode Mad Love, right, there comes a point where Joker pushes her out of a window in a fit of rage. And when Harley hits the ground and she's wounded, what does Harley say? Harley says, I'm sorry, Mr. J. It was my fault. She blames herself for her, for her boyfriend's abusiveness. And even in this very sad clip here, uh, when Harley resolves to leave the Joker, she finds that he left a small gift for her in her cell in Arkham, and then she forgives him. Right? I've always liked this particular image of Harley because I think from a visual perspective it represents who the character is. It's this cracked image motif. Yes, there's the supervillainess the, of uh, Harley Quinn, right? The psychotic, you know, manic uh, performer, I guess you could say. But then you see beneath the mask, and beneath the mask is Harleen Quinzel, an emotionally abused and battered woman who is broken and crying inside. What frustrates me about Samu's tweet here is the fact that the, it is, how do I put it? It feeds into what I like to call the Jessica Rabbit effect. And what I mean by that is, is that there's been so much focus on the, on the sexuality and the sexual display of a character like Jessica Rabbit that the more important elements are forgotten. Yes. Jessica Rabbit is a seductress. She's the femme fatale. She is sex on legs. She also loves her husband, Roger Rabbit, and will do anything to protect him, including hit him on, a head, hit him on the head with a frying pan so he won't get hurt. Likewise, while Harley, yes, is sexy, she's also homicidal. She's also manic. She's also chaotic. And she's also the Joker's victim. She's also a victim of an abusive relationship that warped her mind. And this unhealthy obsession 
in my opinion, with how sexy she does or doesn't look in a comic book or in a movie, completely misses the point of the character. She's a victim of, and then later a survivor of, intimate partner violence. And I think, really, that should be the focus, not how tight or how skin-bearing her costume is. Now, on to David Ayer's tweet. David Ayer writes, Sadly, her story arc was eviscerated. It was her movie in so many ways. Look, I tried. I rendered Harley comic book accurate. Everything is political now. Everything. I just want to entertain. I will do better. Here's my opinion on his tweet. I don't know if I call this Suicide Squad look comics book accurate. Perhaps inspired by the comic books. And then its popularity uh, brought the comic... Or, or rather, I should say the popularity of the look, in particular with cosplayers, brought the look into the comic. So sort of this cycle thing, right? It's inspired by the comics, but then the look becomes so popular, it's brought into the comics. That's the way I see it, if we're going about whether or not this outfit is comic book accurate. Now, while I cannot speak to Suicide Squad as a film, because I never saw it, and I don't plan to, from what I do know about it, yeah, I could see why Harley is dressed in this manner and why she is so sexualized, as... Uh, Samu put it. She's the Joker's sidekick in this situation. She's most likely dressing this way because it makes Joker happy. Or at least she thinks it makes him happy. Or will otherwise uh, garner her his attention. But as we know, right, the Joker isn't really interested and doesn't really care. His only focus really is either on hurting Harley or more importantly, trying to break down Batman. So what Harley looks like isn't really going to matter to him. But Harley, because she, at least at this point, is the doting, devoted girlfriend, will dress in any way she, she can to get her boyfriend's attention. I think every woman's had that experience of your boyfriend or your husband is uh, focused on something and invested in something, and you want him to focus, your, to, to focus his attention on you. And so you dress in a certain way or you approach him in a certain way to let him know that you should be paying attention to me, honey, and not that football game. <laughs> but anyway, right? So I, so I have no problem personally with uh, the costume itself. I think it fits the character. Uh, it fits her visually. I think it fits, again, her motivations, what she represents, where she is. Uh, in the story, so I have no problem with it. But Ayer also brings up the fact that, as he says here, everything is political now, which is true. I don't know if it's a new type of sexual politics, but I, there certainly is sexual politics at work, where sexual politics, in my opinion, used to be that if a woman looked like this or if she was aggressively feminine, in, in, in her physical appearance, in, in, her di in her display, right? Especially in her public display. That she was immoral, or she was just getting by on her looks, or she was sleeping, t sleeping her way to the top, or she wasn't cut out for the job, right? There, were these, there, there, there would be these assumptions that she could not uh, get the job that she had on merit and therefore was using her looks and or her body to get ahead. These days, it seems that instead of having that assumption, right, that if she looks aggressively feminine or sexy, as, as some uh, uh, would say, that, that she must be uh, using her sex appeal in a uh, immodest way, instead it seems to be this case of if she has sex appeal at all, especially if it's sex appeal that would appeal to men, Keep in mind, lesbians also like hot girls, and even straight women appreciate a beautiful, sexy woman because we would like to be that. But anyway, <laughs> it seems to be the trend these days that if a female character is aggressively feminine or sexy in any way, 
especially if she was created by a man or drawn by a man or in any way it seems to be for the male benefit that she must she she must now be desexed right and not only desexed but made to look grotesque in most instances i think harley's actually one of the few characters who has avoided this in the comics but i think that's also because the comics have focused near exclusively on her lesbian relationship with Poison Ivy. But that's a story for another day. But, generally speaking, especially with Marvel, as, as I've covered in many videos, characters who were once, uh, uh, I guess you could say, embodied female empowerment, right? Such as Captain Marvel, back when she was Miss Marvel, or uh, She-Hulk, have now been masculinized and made grotesque, both in appearance and in personality. But again, I guess I guess being queer, as, as Harley has been in the comics for, uh, what, about 20-some years at this point, I guess protects her from this. So basically, if, if it appeals to, to, to straight men, right, even if straight women could, could get something out of it, masculinize it. If the character has a lesbian relationship, or is what I, what I like to call the DC making all of their female characters bi bisexual, fan service lesbians, then she can still be feminine and sexy because now you're trying to appeal to a different audience. I guess they forgot about men and, and their uh, uh, obs obsession with two girls kissing. But anyway, <laughs> Uh, that's the video, and I will see you all on the next one. Have a good um, Sunday. Uh, for those who celebrate Easter, I uh, hope you have a good day, and uh, I will see you all around. Bye.